for now, please open your minds, your hearts, and your hands. Give a warm welcome to Kira Goldstein. Thank you, Maureen. Uh, great to see you again and be back here in this space with you all. Um, actually, I, I just got back from Washington, D.C. last <laughs> night. I was at the White House yesterday uh, and uh, earlier in the week, and um, I'm going to share with you a picture right now. That's me and my beautiful wife, Jennifer. You can see that. Um, hopefully you can see the- Yes, the beautiful. Okay. And then uh, because we're going to be talking about my family a little bit, there's a picture of uh, my two kids. Uh, the young person in uh, the black shirt is Caleb. He's 26 years old. And then uh, between Jennifer and myself is our son, Gabriel, who is now 18 and uh, heading off to school. So uh, that's uh, the visual sharing portion uh, in what's closest to my heart. So I'm happy to, to be sharing that with you. I know that um, Maureen has uh, mentioned the conversation about transgender people. Um, I, I should probably state right off the beginning for those of you that don't know who I am. I am a proud transgender person and have dedicated my life to helping people uh, come to a deeper acceptance of what my life experience and the life experience of so many people that are just like me. Uh, we are tasked often with uh, one of the hardest questions um, in the world, right? Those people say to us, well, how do you know who you are, right? And for some reason, LGBTQ people in particular have taken the bait right? Like somehow we can easily answer that question, right? Well, how did you know? How do you know? Well, how does anybody know? You know, I think that is one of the hardest questions. How do you know who you are? Um, we just know, but in the conversation around either spirituality or sexuality or gender identity, for many people, those types of conversations are the most difficult conversations to have not only because they're intimate and personal, but because there are so few words that we get to choose from when trying to explain a human experience. You know, we hold the word love uh, in such high regard, but you know, you can love your family and you can love pizza, right? And they're completely different, but they also, um, it can be described in a single word. And somehow we know what that means. Everybody shares in that experience. Although for love, uh, people experience love in so many different ways. And uh, I like to draw that parallel because gender identity is about who we are. And for those of you that have never met someone who is transgender or non-binary, or I've had a conversation with someone. That's the life experience I'd like to bring to you today and to share. And in this space here today, I want you to know that from the depth of my spirit and being, there are no questions that I will not answer or find offensive. Curiosity to me is one of the greatest gifts that we have as human beings. And positive intent and curiosity to me are the two guiding principles to being able to engage in life and what that actually means. If we can't ask questions, regardless of how silly they may be, or even if they might be harmful to somebody, if we approach those conversations with positive intent, we can always apologize for the harm we might cause. But at the same time, we as beings are always trying to grow as well. So I understand that. And I hope that uh, that invitation will uh, bring you into this conversation, whether or not it's a question or to just share your own experience about how you have personally moved towards a deeper acceptance of transgender people or of all people. Uh, to me, it's, it's irrelevant, but my own journey as a transgender person has brought to me a, a level of inclusion and acceptance in my daily life that I never dreamed possible because I spent so much time uh, 
prior to my own transition, judging not only myself, but others, right? It was uh, part of my resistance to share my authentic self. And it was, um, I believe coming out uh, as myself, as Gara, as the person you're speaking with right now, as the most beautiful thing that has ever happened in my life. And rarely do we have the opportunity to talk about gender identity and spirituality. And as uh, Maureen had uh, so graciously shared about my work history and the work that I do, um, one of the most powerful things I get to do is talk about gender as it pertains to religious belief and um, how incredibly grateful I am for the life experience I've had um, and have around gender identity and the ancient texts and how deeply uh, most, not all, most major religions uh, identify human beings on a binary. And uh, that is a struggle that I also had to go through. But I've come out at the other end understanding that the human energy around gender identity um, is incredibly fascinating. When um, I look at Judeo-Christian teachings, for instance, and we talk about the creator creating uh, humans in their image. And I, from a binary perspective, think, well, then if that's the case, and we live in a binary world, male and female, well, then maybe the creator was the first non-binary person because the creator created both male and female as part of who they are. And we are representatives of that. So I think it's fascinating when we take an inclusive look at gender in spiritual teachings and what that actually means, how that is divided and how that light of religion um, actually shines through someone that has a very unique or um, you know, deeply connected message around their own spirituality and gender identity. I think ultimately it comes down to an acceptance of self and an acceptance of others. And I use the word acceptance very carefully because I believe that human beings have the ability to accept something without having to understand it. And I think religion is a perfect example, regardless of the religion. We accept that those teachings will bring us love and light and we don't necessarily have to understand it. We can just open our heart to those teachings in the same way that we can open our heart to all the things that we don't understand or potentially fear. And so I'd like to say that, you know, you can accept something without understanding it. And, and an example of that could be, you know, and it happens every day. We just don't think about it. Um, I, I was just on an airplane last night coming home. And we trust that the pilot will get us from point A to point B, but we don't have to understand all the dynamics of aerospace engineering and how to fly an airplane and all the technology involved in that journey. But we can trust and accept that the pilot understands all of it in the same way that when you meet someone who has a life that or life experience that is different than your own, you can accept that person wholly and completely without having to understand what their life experience has been. And so um, in, in that same way, and I think that, um, you know, Maureen knows this about me, I have, I have studied religion. I find the Course in Miracles to be an incredibly beautiful message. I connected with it immediately because of its also somewhat binary, powerful, most powerful teaching around love and fear, because that was my own struggle. I feared being myself. And that fear was simply the absence of love. Right? It was, I did not have enough love in my heart around 
who I was, or I didn't understand how much more love I could have for myself is maybe a more accurate way to, to share that idea. And when people talk about coming out in the LGBTQ community, right? Like before people knew that I was transgender or knew that I, you know, may have been gay or lesbian or however people come out. I think a more accurate term for me would be letting people in, um, not coming out. I, I didn't jump through a big piece of paper and be like, hello, I'm here. You know, it was more like very slowly allowing people into my life, trusting in them, loving them enough and removing that fear to, um, to share with those around me who I truly knew myself to be. We are right now in Pride Month and when we celebrate uh, in this moment for so many families, millions of people in this country, the celebration of pride will mean different things to everyone. You know, for me personally, um, pride is the celebration of love, right? That is that we can love who we want, how we want, um, without judgment from others. And for those that would judge, um, that's the opposite of love, right? So when I see the pride flag, I don't think of the politics. I don't think of the aggression. I don't think of the target that is on the LGBTQ plus community. I think of the LGBTQ community simply trying to raise a flag to promote love. And for me, it's incredibly powerful and incredibly beautiful that when you see a pride flag if you feel hatred or disgust or anything like that in your heart then I understand that you are likely a person that has not truly felt love and so I feel for those that see this community and fear it in any way because it's so completely polar opposite to what the community is trying to share with the world. 